All right, boys. Girls, 36. Hold on, I've got to adjust my mic because my mic's about to fall down. What's going on? It's your boy, Roos, and welcome back again to another video slash episode on a podcast if you're listening to this on a podcast, okay? 36 Squad. Today we are talking about Seven Deadly Sins, Wrath of the Gods, episode 17, okay? And if you're still watching Seven Deadly Sins, just understand this year, you are the GOAT, okay? Like, seriously, because a lot of people have actually fallen off from this episode or season of series, and it's just due to the quality, and I understand that, do you know what I mean? Like, it could have been better, but it is what it is. As a fan of the story, I'm still going to watch it, and I guess if you guys are listening to this or watching this, you guys are still watching it too. So, um, in this episode, okay, we find out that Hawk is basically the link towards Purgatory. And the last person that went to Purgatory was um, her dad, okay? I can't believe I, I literally forgot her name. Like, I literally forgot her name. But this Enchantress's father. And when he was there, a minute felt like a year. And he had been there for quite a long time, okay? Um, Ban seems to be the only person... Okay, this is the guy. All right. And this is basically how Purgatory looks like, okay? Um, her father went there to see what it's like. And when he was there, um, it was hot and cold at the same time. Um, you lose all physical senses. Do you know what I mean? One minute turned into a year, like I said. And time and space is just practically warped, okay? It's not a place you want to be. Uh, someone who has a human bodily form or someone who has a locked spiritual soul do you know what i mean but someone like ban whose body um can deteriorate and regain its youth just like how it would have been back when he was um for, when he first drank the youth of the fairy fairy tree or whatever it's called sorry the fairy juice um yeah he's the best candidate to go there okay um let's be honest um ban's been kind of useless in this series somewhat okay i remember the first time ban came into the series right and we were introduced to him being meliodas's best friend and him and meliodas were basically green each other but they were doing like you know competition with their hands do you know what i mean like like bear clapping with each other like doof 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 and they were slapping each other like taicho ban taicho ban like that was very very fun and very lit to watch and then when they did the arm wrestle they destroyed the whole building like the power level is crazy the strength of these two is mad so it was kind of shocking to to me when ban in this series wasn't really of help like ban hadn't been the band that we all know ban to be you know cocky overpowered like he seems to me now like just a the, just one of the weakest in the whole um, team, excluding Hawk, obviously. But if Hawk is able to put people into purgatory with her own, you know what I mean, with her own, her own will, then I would say Ban is definitely the weakest. And it's almost like Ban has become the troll of this series because Ban has just been so useless. He's just been besides Elaine's side and just been weeping about how he hasn't been able to help his friend. And fair enough, do you know what I mean? It's understandable, but... It's like, Ban, come on, bro. You're an immortal. You can do something. So at least um, they've given Ban his time to shine, which is this episode. And he's now entered Purgatory. We didn't get to see much. We just got to see him falling from the skies, from where the, wherever the location was or the entry point is. And that was it. Uh, mainly, the episode was practically... Um, it was kind of basically about Purgatory. And it was mainly about how Meliodas got into a confrontation with two of his two of his brothers zeldris and this guy over here with the gray hair forgive me Eskino, okay zeldris and Eskino, and how he demands to be the demon king now even though zeldris has a bit of the abilities of the demon king it seems to be like it seems to me that he is no match to meliodas still when he's in his demon form do you know what i mean um Eskino had mentioned that meliodas is someone even the four archangels feared like that goes to show the level of strength meliodas has within himself let alone without the demon mark in his face or on his head like portraying that he's that demon form do you know what i mean um Eskino woken up i said Eskino. oh my goodness did i have i been saying Eskino all this time have i actually been saying Eskino all this time i don't mean to say Eskino. i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry um, Esther Rosa, sorry, Esther Rosa. 
I don't know why they made that name very similar, you know, now that I think about it. But, yeah, Esther Rose is now alive, okay? He seemed to have woken up from the um, the juice that was maintaining his body and, re and healing him as well. And it's just nice to see everyone's coming back together. It seems to me that everybody is going to actually get into some form of altercation because nobody wants Meliodas to be the Demon King. Well, that was until Zeldris was convinced to, to help out Meliodas. And to be honest, I feel like Zeldris also has a reason for helping Meliodas. I feel like it's because he has someone that he loves too. I don't know. I haven't read the manga, so don't quote me on it. I'm just literally giving out my point of view from my deduction of watching this series because it doesn't make sense for Zeldris just to give up the rights of wanting to be a demon king just because of a few whispers that um, Meliodas did to, to Zeldris. Do you know what I mean? Like, it made him... He, like that was just all he had to say to you know make him help him which is very confusing so anyways um we get to see that Meliodas holds down the two who attempted to go for Meliodas when he mentioned he wanted to be the demon king Esterosa wanted um um Elizabeth for himself because he didn't want to be the demon king which was his option um and to be honest Meliodas just showed him why he, he is the top of the, the food chain in terms of the demons and in terms of all of his brothers. He even held back Zeldris' um, apprentice, shall I say, or helper, or waiter, if I could say that. And it's just it just goes to show that Meliodas is definitely, definitely up there in terms of tier. Like, he's, he's so strong. Even the fact that Zeldris possesses the Demon King's powers, he cannot do anything. So, anyways, to wrap up this whole episode, right, this is just literally literally all it was. It was literally about Meliodas coming back, claiming to be that he wants to be the new Demon King. Ban basically going into Purgatory. They were telling us what Purgatory was basically like. And basically, we got to understand that um, the Ten Commandments, for Meliodas to become as strong as the Demon King, everyone who's got the mark of the Ten Commandments, which was given by the Demon King, shared with his powers, um, they are attempting to go out and get for Meliodas so that Meliodas can be as strong as the Demon King or at least rival him and then take his throne and in my opinion I feel like it's still not going to be enough I still feel like the Demon King has something underneath his sleeve I feel like even if the Ten Commandments were given to Meliodas and he was to lose himself and be able to fight the Demon King on par I still feel like the Demon King being that he is the Demon King he is still going to defeat Meliodas. And right now, Meliodas is not in his right state of mind, is what I would say. But at the same time, I feel like he is. Because he's not, like, it doesn't seem like he's fine with himself no more. Do you know what I mean? And in this episode, there was a moment where he understood why Elizabeth was, like, so upset at the fact that he wanted to be a demon king when he was back in his dorms with her. Do you know what I mean? Um, Elizabeth was basically just saying how she's upset and how she feels like how um how she feels like the love that she has for him is something that is of her own will, not something that the goddess had placed within her so that she can be um revived every time and fall in love with Meliodas. Do you know what I mean? Like it's just it was just it was oh my goodness, it was just so devastating and very upsetting to hear. Like she's gone through this 107 times, bro falling in love with Meliodas. I don't know how many years averaged out like a human would possibly live for. Maybe like let's say 80, 80 years. Let's say the average is 80 years. If you're doing that like, 107 times, bro, goodness gracious. And it just goes to show the age that Meliodas is like, do you know what I mean? But anyway, to wrap it up, okay, uh, Meliodas goes back and he basically, you know, goes back to the old Meliodas that we know him as, do you know what I mean? And he basically tells her how whether she was a goddess, like whoever she is right now, whoever the 106 past girls like she was back then, he's still falling in love with her and he still cares for her. And the reason why he feels like he has to t turn her back is because that's the only will he has for himself. That's the only thing that's going on for him, like that makes him still care for her. Like at this point, Meliodas is actually just bad at this point. Like, like it's, it's tough. It's tough for him, and I feel like he's still fine within himself, but. I like the fact that Elizabeth said to him that, you know what, since you want to act all crud and act all crazy, I'm going to do something from my, my side and join the Seven Deadly Sins and do what I can to stop you. It was amazing to see the um, the altercation that she had between Meliodas and, and, her, and herself because 
I've never seen her put her hands on Meliodas. It was always Meliodas touching her in a very seductive way. And it was always her allowing it because she loves Meliodas. Do you know what I mean? Like, it was very friendly. And the fact that she raised her hand against Meliodas, it goes to show that this is going to be something that's going to be crazy. Like, she's got three days to live. Like, bands in purgatory attempted to get back the emotions of Meliodas. I wonder where this is going to lead. I hope um, Zeldris and Esterosa don't get the... Ten Commandments before Ban comes back and Elizabeth finds a solution, but it, it, we'll see. We'll see. At the end, Meliodas is on the floor, like shocked from the slap, which is understandable. She is a goddess, so that slap ain't no normal slap. That slap is from the high, from the high heavens. Do you know what I mean? But it should have been followed up with a headbutt and a kick. Do you get what I'm saying? Like she should have done something else, but. I guess Elizabeth just loves him too much to do too much to him, do you know what I mean? And she understands that he's not in the right state of man. So anyways, episode 17 of Seven Daily Sins was a good episode. I enjoyed it, okay? If you're still watching this series, Gods of the Wrath, shouts out to you, man. Honestly, shouts out to you because you are a real fan of Seven Daily Sins. Everybody else who decided to skip it or not watch it because the quality had definitely deducted it's understandable but at the same time how can you call yourself an anime fan or anime nerd or a weeb or an otaku if that's something that's able to just deter like de like de is this the right word deter you from the story do you know what i mean so it's just like come on man like you're not here for animation you're really here for the story and if you're able to leave because of the animation then you're not really a fan of the anime that's my deduction in it but yo it's been your boy Roos thank you very much for watching this if, this episode this video listening to this episode on the podcast if you don't follow me on my socials make sure to follow me okay it's basically all at Roos366 that includes Twitter and my channel and on, on YouTube and, and my podcast and, and that's just everything okay it's been your boy Roos hope you guys enjoyed today's episode on the podcast episode on the video or this video anyways I'm out peace